This news will shock you. In this nation of ours, we walk the streets with people from Scotland. I went undercover to the British Embassy this week to try and find these people. Inside the British Embassy, there is a Scottish government department that is definitely 100% happy to be under the UK umbrella and definitely not getting itchy feet whatsoever. First of all, I met Consul for the British Embassy, Harry Carberry, who, it's fair to say, is experiencing a boyhood dream by getting to live in Ireland. Oh, I've been here for 34 years now. Married an Irish girl a long time ago. The only reason I'm here, mate. Depends where this gets aired, but if something happened to my wife or anything, I would go home. And we've had that conversation, and I think the only way I'm getting home is in a box. And it is that joyful optimism that, you would have to say, is the real common ground between Scotland and Ireland. Now, Harry is a man who has managed to stubbornly hold on to his thick accent, despite almost three and a half decades here in Ireland. Scottish people just don't lose their accent. Simple yeah. as that, especially Glaswegians. Glaswegians don't lose their accent. And they might come a wee bit. We might say Jesus, we might say grand, but that's a bit. So I think Irish as well. When you go abroad, you go anywhere, you don't lose your accent either. Probably a cold bear. I just can't resist them. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same. It's a Celtic thing. I've worked hard to secure this interview with Harry because ahead of Scotland versus Ireland at the Rugby World Cup this weekend, I wanted to get his expert take. I don't know the rules. Yeah. I literally don't know the rules. When things happen, I get annoyed because I don't know what the referee's doing. But I'm, I'm a massive Celtic fan and Scotland football fan, so... I mean, if you were there, I'd be screaming and bawling and going mental, but I'll be going, what's going on? I then met this man. His name is Fraser McDougall. Therefore, he is the current champion of the most Scottish name in the universe award for the 10th year running. In the embassy, there, there's a lot of Scots, yeah. so we have kind of safety in numbers here. We in Ireland love Scottish people. This is mainly due to the fact that Scottish people are not English. This is a little section of the British Embassy. Is there like a sort of, you know, uh, administrative Hadrian's Wall somewhere along here that you're not allowed to pass <laughs> when you, you see the English and Welsh around here? No, uh, definitely not a physical one. I think um, as we get into Rugby World Cup, though, we, we will get our own forts. So the Scots will combine and we will absolutely, uh, rivalries will, will, will exist within the embassy. Do, do you like do you walk past like the English people in this? Like, I mean, maybe, maybe, should we be talking in hushed tones here? Are there English people who can hear us? No, uh, I, don't, I think we've got Scottish and Welsh here at the moment okay. and Irish. Um, no, it's very friendly. Very friendly indeed. And I need to restate here that this whole Scotland department is definitely 100% happy to be under the UK umbrella and definitely not getting itchy feet whatsoever. Having finally got access to the inner sanctum of this maximum security complex of international diplomacy, I had one shot to ask the question we've all been thinking. I was told that I can talk about, you know, Scottish independence, I can talk about Brexit, but do not bring up whiskey in it, these uh, hallowed yeah, the, walls. The more contentious one is whiskey. So um, what's better is going to be your question, Scotland? Should or should it not have the letter E in it? Absolutely not. No. Controversial? Uh, yeah, it just... It's, it should be, like, you, with Siri would give you a red line saying it's spelled incorrectly if you, if you do an E, and if it doesn't, it should. Katie McNeil here is the head of the Scottish government in Ireland. Actually, probably Irish whisky is trying to start snapping at Scotland's heels with some of those, uh, like, single malts and that. However, I would never have drunk whisky with a mixer before I came here. Right. Uh, and I've actually discovered a secret love for Jameson's and Ginger. Okay. You, you may as well just get the Irish passport now at this point. <laughs> the big Scottish-Irish sports story of the year was on the agenda. We've got Shinty hurling matches mm. coming up in a couple of weeks' time. I mean, Shinty would have been the game that's played in some of these more remote rural areas um, across the Highlands. It's probably like less extensive than the, the GAA, but I know it will always be a challenge to keep teams going in those uh, smaller places. 2019 was the last time the Shinty International was played and it was when Ireland ended Scotland's reign of terror in the fixture. Covid was a tough time for everyone, but four years without the Shinty International? No one should ever have to go through that. Thankfully, the end is near. It makes its comeback this year. Yeah, when you bring two of those sports which are such high energy with uh, uh, sticks <laughs> together, it's going to be quite, uh, quite a spectacle, I think. My time undercover in the British Embassy was coming to a close, but I had found out about a secret gathering of Scottish people in this very country. It is called the St Andrews Society. I'm going out to meet some people from the St Andrews Society mm -hmm. in the next couple of days. Can you assure me that the St Andrews Society is not a cult? I can assure you, it's, de it's definitely not. They are lovely people. I couldn't help but think that cult leaders can be lovely people too. 
but I took my chance and met Alistair Campbell from the St. Andrews Society. He also assured me it was not a cult. And after committing to donating 50% of my salary for the next 100 years and a pint of my blood, he granted me this interview. Well, the St Andrews Society is actually a historic society. It was originally set up um, to look after um, sort of impoverished Scots living in Ireland or in Dublin anyway. St Andrews Night is in November uh, and uh, what you'll have is a, we would have a dinner and a Cayley, and a Cayley is tremendously good fun. If you haven't been to a Cayley, it's uh, basically dancing, stroke, WrestleMania. You're, you're throwing each other around the place, and it's just a hot, sweaty mess. And then the other one, the, the sort of the big one, and the one that people will have heard of is the Burn Supper, which. Uh, follows the format and um, basically there's, there's lots of ceremony to it before the haggis is brought in and uh, sort of uh, opened up and um, there's, there's lots of burns read and uh, sort of discussions, uh, there, there, there's uh, a discussion, there's uh, almost like a debate uh, between the gents and the, the ladies. What's the most intense debate subject you've had uh, at Burns Night? Oh, they tend to be kind of light-hearted. They, they, they never really go into you know, sort of the debates that you, you'd see in sort of uh, the schools uh, as into this country should be banned. It, it, it tends to be generally sort of, you know, sort of fun. Uh, should, such... should Ben Healy play for Ireland or Scotland? Uh, exactly, yeah. Finally, confirmation that it was indeed the St Andrews Society who wrestled Ben Healy away from this nation. It was a revelation that shook me to my core. And it begs the question, how far does this conspiracy go? What other institutions have the Scottish infiltrated in this country? And of course, where do we go from here?